Hello there, I'm Bart Reed and I'm the project manager for Ant's Memory Profiler. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a simple strategy for finding memory leaks in your application. The application I'll be using is a simple WinForms app, but the techniques I'll show you here could be applied to ASP.NET apps or indeed any other type of .NET application. The application I'm going to profile is called QueryBee which is a really simple application for running queries against SQL Server databases. You enter a SQL query, which is run against the database, and you get back some results, which are displayed in a grid. You can open and close as many query windows as you like, and execute as many queries as you like. The problem is that it's leaking memory, because every time you open a query window, execute a query, and then close it again, the memory usage gets just that little bit higher. In a production system, if this behavior carried on unchecked, the app would eventually fall over. As I profile query B, I'm going to take memory snapshots of the managed heap at various points. In essence, these are a complete representation of memory being used up by the application for storing objects. The reason we have to collect snapshots is because in a normal application there's just too much data to try to collect it in real time and if we did try to do this the overhead would impact your application so seriously that it would probably become unusable. The basic strategy is to start query B and set everything up, take a snapshot, then perform the action that I suspect causes the leak, take another snapshot and compare the two to see what's changed. Once I've figured out what's causing the leak I'm going to make changes to my code and then rerun the memory profiler to see if I've really fixed the problem. So, without further ado, let's get to it. What we have here is the Ant's Memory Profiler setup dialog. This appears immediately after you've opened up the profiler. You can see that the Memory Profiler supports profiling different types of application and has settings relevant to each for you to fill out. But we're only interested in the .NET executable settings, so let's switch back to that. I need to tell Ant's Memory Profiler where my executable is, so I'm going to click this Browse button and then navigate to the Query B executable. OK, now we've got that, we don't really need to worry about any of these other settings. What I'm going to do is take a look at which performance counters we'll be collecting data from. The Memory Profiler does collect and display performance counter data in real time and this data can provide a useful visual aid to what's going on in your application. You can see that a number of the most useful counters are already selected by default, so we'll leave these settings as they are. I think we're ready to go, so I'm just going to click Start Profiling. The profiler is telling me that it's profiling the application, and there are also some instructions here telling me to compare snapshots. We can see Query B sitting down there in the system tray, and now we're also getting some performance counter data through up here. Notice how it's all flat lines at the moment because Query B is just sitting there doing nothing. Let's kick Query B into life. It's asking me for some connection details for a database, so let's just stick master in there. Note how the memory usage increased when I populated the list of databases, but since this window hangs around for the life of the application and is simply reused every time it's shown, I'm not worried about it. I'm going to take my first snapshot, which I'm going to use as a baseline for comparison with later snapshots. When I click the Take Snapshot button, the memory profiler will suspend the execution of Query B, force a full garbage collection, and then take a snapshot of the heap memory it's using. We do the garbage collection to remove any unreferenced objects from the heap so that they don't appear in the results and confuse matters. When you have a memory leak in .NET, the problem isn't the unreferenced objects which the garbage collector can clean up, but the objects that are still referenced and which you're no longer using that it can't collect. You'll notice there's a slight uptick in memory usage when I took the snapshot. Ant's Memory Profiler does use some memory in the target process, often allocated progressively, 
but the maximum amount is generally between 20 and 30 megabytes, so the impact on a real application would not be large. In this case it's pretty insignificant and only noticeable at all because Query B isn't using that much memory to start with. I want to be able to compare the results in this snapshot to the results in the snapshot taken after the leak happens, so I'm going to move on to perform the actions which I think manifest the memory leak. OK, let's start by executing a query. Great, I've got some results back. Now I'm going to close this window and at this point I'd expect the heap memory usage to fall back to where it was around here. Because the query window and any resources associated with it should have been cleaned up. So let's try it. Well, the window's gone but the memory usage hasn't fallen. So what's happening there? Let's take our second snapshot and see what we can see. Great, that's done. I'm going to stop profiling Query B now because I think I've collected all the information I need. However, if I wasn't sure about that, I could carry on profiling so that I could take more snapshots later on. You can see here that Ant's Memory Profiler has automatically compared the two snapshots for me. In general, it will always automatically compare the latest snapshot to your selected baseline snapshot. One of the most common problems people seem to have with memory profilers in general is relating the information they see back to their own code. So I'm going to show you how to do this, but note that I'm not going to do what most people do, which is to try to immediately filter out everything that isn't their own code, because most of the code being executed by your application will either be part of the .NET Framework class libraries or part of third-party libraries that you use. Thus it follows that you're most likely to see types leaking that weren't created by you, even though it's most likely a problem in your code that's causing them to leak. Starting off by looking at your own types too early can mean you miss important information and are left confused because you can't see what you think you should be seeing. The first thing I'm going to do is filter out everything except objects that are new in the second snapshot. I know that the leaked objects only appear in the second snapshot because I perform the action that causes the leak after taking the first snapshot. Now I'm going to look at the largest growth in size chart in the comparison results. You can see that the largest growth was for the RB tree of K plus node of interray class. Now I may not know what this does but because it's grown in size so much between the snapshots, it's a great place to start hunting for a leak. So that's what I'm going to do. This is the class list, which is showing me comparison information for every type matching the current filter settings in the snapshots I'm comparing. You can see that RB tree of K plus node of interray is highlighted. I want to find out where most instances of this class are referenced. To do this, I'm going to create a class reference graph by clicking this button here. This is telling me that 100% of these objects are referenced by this RB tree of K plus tree page of int class. Again, I don't necessarily know or need to know anything about this, so I'm going to continue expanding to the left along the path through which most of the objects are referenced until I get to something that starts making sense to me.